Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys, and today we're going to talk about the Spider X Pro from Data Color. We're going to talk a little bit about monitor calibration, but really, what's my recommendation on this? And is it worth it? Right after this. In today's video, we're going to talk about a specific product. This one's by Data Color, and it's the Spider X Pro. By the way, this is one of the most popular calibration tools for monitors out on the market. Uh, I got this one from B&H on loan, so I want to thank B&H for that. And to let you know, I try to let you know on all of the product reviews or recommendations that I give, how I got my hands on the product. Uh, this is not given to me by the company, so there's no uh, quid pro quo review or recommendation on this one. I get to give you my honest feelings. And most importantly, I let you know, is it worth the money that you're going to pay for it? Uh, in case I forget any, there's not really a lot of technical specs, but this one's going to run you about $150. Data Color makes an assortment of products, so they make some higher end, some lower ends but this one falls into that really sweet price point and I think that's one of the reasons for its popularity now before we get into the product I want to just tell you quickly about monitor calibration in general and why you probably if you're a photographer especially want to consider this uh, often the monitors that we receive out of the box are not properly calibrated and therefore the colors the brightness the contrast saturation all of that may not be accurate and the reason it's important, especially for photographers, is we want our work to be presented the best way. And for 99% of photographers, the way we share our images is through digital venues. And that means everybody else is looking on a monitor as well. And because everybody's seeing this on a monitor, it's really important that we are trying to give them the best depiction of the, the photograph we have. Let me give you a quick example of this. I do some critiques and some uh, image reviews. And sometimes I'll get feedback like, wow, that feels really oversaturated or, or it feels really contrasty. And I'll ask them, is your monitor calibrated? And almost invariably, people say, I never calibrated it. So monitor calibration is just really going to help you get an idea that what you are seeing on your monitor and how you are editing your images will be the best representation possible. It's also of note that most other people's <laughs> monitors are not calibrated. So people can see different things from monitor to monitor. It's a little bit different than when viewing in print because once you print out a final product, the product is the product. Everybody sees the same thing. But when you're on monitors, it's, it's a lot different. So I'm going to do a quick unboxing of this. So the importance of calibration, really, really high, in, especially for photographers. And man, it would be an ideal world if everybody's monitor saw the same thing. But I just need you to know. What you see on your iPhone versus what you see on a monitor versus what you see on somebody else's monitors, they will all have subtle differences. Now, let's just quickly show you the unboxing of this. It's going to not take very long. It was an incredibly simple product. As I was opening this up, I expected, you know, a, a instruction manual and some wires and some cables. And this is all it was. It was a very, very simple tool. You'll see there's a USB connector that attaches to the uh, calibration device and one sheet of paper. And that's it. So the unboxing was pretty quick on this one. Uh, I want to show you how the format goes and, and kind of the next process. So we've gotten this thing out of the box, and I'm going to jump over to their website. So on their website, you're going to see uh, basically where you download. There's, there's no instructions on this. It's simply a download and step-by-step -step instructions. I'll jump over here, and I'll show you uh, kind of where those downloads occurred. I'm using the Spider X Pro for Windows, so that's the one I selected in, in time frame. I'm not going to bore you with the download on this. It took about five minutes. So the download, and it was kind of surprising, the download took longer than the calibration time which was pretty interesting. A lot of people want to know, like, how did this, how does this set up or how does this work? I'm going to play the video of my actual setup on this side as I'm just kind of talking through the setup and the, and the, the unit itself and, and maybe some of the pros and cons. So the first thing you're going to do is just plug this into your computer, simply drape it over your computer. You'll see my monitors tilted at an angle and that's just to help keep it flat. It does do an initial light room reading of light so you want to make sure that the light that you edit in is close to what you're going to be calibrating this monitor to not advised to have a lot of direct light by the way for any type of editing so you don't want to have glares and for this video i've got a spotlight up here uh, probably not ideal for editing but you want to get the room ambient light kind of neutral 
and not impacting the calibration. And then you're just going to see me go through and it's going to ask a couple baseline questions around brightness. So you'll see me kind of fiddle with my monitor here a little bit and pick out some, some adjustments and try to get the this displays right. This part of the calibration was probably the most labor intensive. And it, it was as simple as trying to figure out and remember where my brightness controls were. And once I dialed that in, it continued just sampling some colors. So the software then just runs a process. And I was really impressed by the speed of this. As I've been talking, we maybe a minute into this process, a minute and a half, and we're getting close to the finish line already. I mean, that's how close we are to this process. Now I'm about two minutes in, two and a half minutes in, and it's running its course. And the system is essentially finishing up at this point. And that's really as long as this whole entire process took was just about three minutes. I told you the download took almost as long, if not longer than the actual calibration. Now there are some options to recalibrate here. And once I calibrated this first monitor, it showed me the before and after. Now I can put up a quick video of what that looked like. So I'll show it to you on this um, calibration video. I'll also took a separate video and this was just taken with my iPhone just to kind of show you the before and the after from a third person's point of view. And then I decided to calibrate my other monitor. So I have two monitors. Now, going into this process, the monitors looked very, very different. And that was one of the concerns I had is, you know, is one of these monitors getting too old? Do I need to get rid of it? After the calibration process, I was pleasantly surprised to know that both monitors are in pretty good shape. Now, there were changes to both monitors. I showed you the before and the, the after on one. After running the calibration on the second monitor, and I've done this several times, I recalibrated it and recalibrated it. After running it that second time, there were only tiny, tiny differences. So the, the initial calibration got it really, really close. But the interesting thing was the monitors are slightly different. Now, I don't know if that's an accuracy of the product or if there's something with my monitors. But I will tell you that one of these monitors, and I'll show you a picture over here, kind of a side-by-side. -side. Again, third-party standpoint, taking a picture of my monitors. You'll see one's a little bit it doesn't may not look it in this picture to my eyes it's a little warmer uh so my main monitor feels a little bit it's just a hair warmer the other one feel, feels a hair cooler and, and it seems to have a little bit more like red and magenta tone in it so there are slight differences in these two monitors and i've recalibrated them several times i come up with almost the same results every time so very very simple process there's really not a whole lot more to this video it's not a lengthy review. There's really not a lot of technical things. All I can do from this point on is, is give you my thoughts and recommendations and what my actual experience was. So let me just talk quickly about the value in this product where I thought the pros were. Um, one, the ease of use is just off the charts. I, I don't know that I've ever used an easier to use product. It was just literally plug and play. Uh, it ran through all the tests itself. The directions were really, really good. I was really, really impressed with it. it absolutely made a difference in both monitors one monitor i almost felt like it saved it uh, the other monitor it, it seemed to really bring some life back to it and i feel much better about it now i wasn't that far off these monitors my one monitor was calibrated years ago um, it wasn't that far off but but one monitor made a significant difference in terms of value uh, i would say if i was doing pros and cons one of the pros i think i'm gonna i'm gonna put value on the pro side at $150, there are other products out there that are much, much more expensive. There's a few products that are that are a little bit less money. Now, I've not tried the other products, so I can't give you a comparison side by side. But for me, for $150, to get it right, especially with multiple monitors, felt like a really, really good investment. By the way, if you're not a photographer and you're satisfied with the performance of your monitor, probably doesn't make that much of a difference. But if you are a photographer, remember, the accuracy of your monitor can be really, really, really important. So uh, I would say from a value standpoint, $150 for somebody doing photography, I think it's an absolute, uh, I hate to say a must, but it, it's an absolutely good investment. If you're a beginning photographer and you're satisfied with your images and your monitor is okay, maybe this isn't something you need right away. But at some point in your evolution as a photographer, uh, this product or product like it, I would say is is pretty mandatory in your process. It, it really is important to have accuracy in your colors and in, in the monitor that it, itself. On the, on the negative side, the only thing I can say is I've got two monitors 
And at the end of the day, I, I, I was hoping they'd be perfectly matched and they're not can't explain that like I, I don't know what part of this the process it happened and I thought recalibrating it would get it right I thought it was, was user error but whatever this metering tool is it's reading these monitors slightly differently and it's giving me a slightly different output which means one of these monitors or both of the monitors are slightly off so is it an absolutely perfect science well I can't tell you that it is I can tell you it helps I can tell you it makes it better and I can tell you I'm pretty certain it makes it closer to perfect but in my experience, it can't be perfect if I've calibrated two monitors and they're both slightly different. So I would say on the con side, I don't know. I would say perfect accuracy is the con. I don't want to say accuracy in general because that makes it seem like the product didn't work or doesn't work. But I have matched up some of these grays. My main monitor feels really, really close to neutral gray. So I think, I think one of these monitors is really, really close to being spot on. The other monitor, I think, is a hair off. And again, just... The accuracy might be a little off, or maybe I got a problem with one of my monitors after all. So that's my really simple review for you today. This was the Spider X by Data Color. I really like the product. I would say for $150, I don't think you can go wrong with this one. And if you're a photographer, it's probably paramount that you look into this process. I felt really good. Again, one of the reasons I did this review from B&H I look at their reviews and it got really good reviews from all of the users doing it, especially around ease of use. And um, I think that value price point, I think it's a pretty good price point, right around $150. I'll put a link to this from B&H down below. So if you're interested in the product, again, this isn't an affiliate link through the manufacturer, uh, but I'll put an affiliate link through B&H since they're just a generic wholesaler. And that's my partner of preference. So uh, check out that link down below if you're curious about this product. Um, down in the comments, I'm really, really curious about your experience with calibration in general. Have you had some really uh, good success stories, maybe some nightmares, uh, products that you've used? I don't mind mentioning other products down in the comments. So if you've got a better experience compared to this, put it down in the comments. This is educational. This isn't just a promo piece for this specific uh, piece of hardware, though I, I will say I really, really liked it. So thanks for tuning into this channel. I'm a wildlife channel. So uh, if you're not subscribed to it, if you're curious about product reviews for photography, make sure you're subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. And since I'm a wildlife photographer, I'm going to tell you, I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.